When dealing with data from a spreadsheet, you're oftentimes confronted with a lot of numbers and possibly words uh, on your spreadsheet. And you'll see that in this case, I have about, uh, let's see, over 500 in 550 or so entries on this uh, form collection spreadsheet. Uh, and it's collecting four different questions or responses to four different uh, prompts. So to make sense of this data, we need to know some of the terminology. So we'll just overview some of the terminology here. Um, e a spreadsheet is made up of columns. That's this here, and you can select the whole column by just collect, selecting the top uh, column identifier B. So columns are starting with uh, uh, alphabetized uh, values. And then we have our rows. Uh, so if you select the row number here on the far left, you can select all the data in that row. So where these two intersect, our columns and our rows, uh, we call this a cell, and that cell is containing uh, a value that could be a number or it could be a word. It could be numerical or it could be alphabetized. So this is what we call a value. Now the value uh, gets its uh, gets its, I guess, basic purpose from the question that was asked, and the question title or the uh, category is actually the title in the first row of the column. So this particular one uh, is taking a look at classroom and extracurricular activities uh, and it's collecting a, um, a Likert scale uh, one to four, four being the most uh, uh, feeling of belonging and one being obviously the least belonging or othered. In this case we have our entries uh, that are all on our rows and each column is indicating some sort of response. So that is a value that we can apply to the response. Now, the value uh, is also could be looked at as having some sort of variable to it, meaning that we can put it into some sort of equation and use it uh, to compare uh, with uh, other data uh, that we've collected. So that becomes a variable. So we know that these are the variables that are collected by all the responses in this column. All right, now, what I've just done and what you can see me doing here is when I select this uh, C up here, I've actually selected a range. Now a range is just a collection of different cells. And again, those cells have certain values and those values can be placed into some sort of variable or equation that you can then make some sort of understanding uh, through a comparative analysis. So we're going to be doing that and you'll notice that there's two different values on this spreadsheet. We collect actually three if you consider the time that was collected. Then we have a different type of variable or value and that is actually just uh, a word. Um, so we identify grade nine. And then those that word or obviously um, uh, alphabetized value is then associated with everything that is in that row for that entry. And those other values, the third values you see are actually your uh, numerical values based on a Likert scale for these four responses, types of responses. All right, so now we can obviously select the whole column to select a range of all the responses for one particular uh, um, uh, response via the form. And you can actually hit shift and combine more columns if you want, or if you just want a cross section of the uh, particular um, data that you've collected, uh, you can go ahead and click, let's say on B1, we will want to retain at all times our headings uh, that helps us uh, understand what data we're seeing in the next step of of pivot tables but basically you select the, uh, the the title for our columns and then you come down and you hold the shift key and you can select a range and now I have identified 20 different rows and those rows are obviously uh, a collection of uh, uh, words or categories 
and also numerical values. Now, this first row, or this I should say first column, B, has now become a column that we can use to actually sift or filter or group. And this is called a grouping variable. So whenever you can see that there's some sort of variation between numerical and also words, the words tend to be the value that you can then, or the variable that you can then use as a grouping variable. And now we can just go ahead and let's go ahead and select those 20 rows again. And now we have a range of data that we can then use the words as grouping variables to then include in our next step, which is pivot tables. And we'll be talking more about that in the next video.